You are listening to Random Gameplay Pimpin. What the fuck is going down? It is your boy, Studio MacGyver, and you are listening to Random Gameplay Pimpin'. Welcome to the show, guys. If you're new to the podcast, welcome to the show. If you are into anime, nerd culture, and most importantly, video games, then you've come to the right place because we talk about all of that shit here. Today's episode is going to be a short one. This is episode 291. The big show is going to be next week, guys, because we have the Game Awards and I'm not really concerned about the actual awards. Uh, That means little to me because, in my opinion, guys, video games and who loves them are subjective. Everybody has a favorite and it doesn't have to necessarily be yours. I'm really looking forward to the game awards because of all of the press, all of the new announcements, release dates and all of that. I'll have all of that shit for you guys next week. So tune in to next week's podcast for that. It's going to be a good one. I think I'm hoping we get some good surprises and I'm, I'm pretty sure we will, but I'll be covering that for you guys uh, next week. But anyway, as far as this episode is concerned, we're going to talk about some video game news. We have a little bit of news here and there, but not a lot going on. Like I said before, guys, a lot of companies, a lot of people are holding all their secrets in their back pocket and waiting for the game award. So that is going to be a treat. I'm going to talk a little bit about what I've done this past week. Me and my son, we had a doozy and we'll probably have a doozy a little bit later. I'm actually recording this episode on a Saturday, early Sunday morning. He's knocked out cold right now um, because he was up late on the prior days playing a certain game. And I'm going to get into that in two shakes of a lamb's tail. But anyway, I want to start off with some news, guys. Going to talk about some Saifu news, some uh, indie game information. We also have uh, Nintendo drama. It seems like we have Nintendo drama almost <laughs> every other show. It seems like Nintendo is just Nintendo. They're not going to change for anybody. Also, the Callisto protocol reviews are out i've seen a little bit of gameplay myself i've I've, uh, actually watched some friends play it and i'm going to talk a little bit about that as well okay uh yeah let's let's just start off the show man i'm going to start off the show with my anime watch list i'm gonna go ahead and start there usually i save that for the end of the show but fuck it (laughs) Uh, i'm actually watching one right now the playstation 5 i'm on crunchy roll and it's uh I just finished an episode of uh, Dead Man Wonderland, so I just started that. Uh, very interesting so far. Uh, last time I checked, and maybe I'm just missing out or something, but I looked at this anime before maybe a week or two ago, and I don't remember seeing all these episodes here. I only remember seeing maybe two or three episodes, and then all of a sudden it seems like we got all 12, we got the OVA there, all that shit. I don't know. Maybe I was seeing something. Anyway, I watched the first episode. Pretty interesting so far. Really want to know what's going to happen. If you guys don't know about this anime, it starts off as this little kid. He's in middle school. He's in class. He's chilling with his friends and everything like that. Everybody's talking about going to this amusement park um, festival or whatever, field trip. And next thing you know, some strange being appears outside of a window. Uh, They call him the man in red. And then all hell breaks loose. Okay, he ends up. Well, really, the whole class ends up being massacred. Okay, he's the only survivor. I think it was 30 kids. (laughs) 29 were dead. He was the only one left. The cops literally threw the book at this kid, assumed that he was responsible for it. And and I'll leave it at that. I don't want to dig too much in it. There's some other things that happen, but I'm not going to spoil it. You guys want to check it out for yourself. It is on Crunchyroll right now. Check that shit out. But anyway, that's what I'm on now. And really, to be honest with you guys, I have been watching a ton of different anime. I've been going back to old anime. I've been watching new anime. You got uh, Chainsaw Man. You got uh, Dead Man Wonderland. You got those. And then I've been going back to some classics. Okay. Matter of fact, last night I watched The Last. It's a Naruto movie if you're not familiar with that. And it takes place right after the fourth Ninja War. And in between the fourth Ninja War and Baruto. Okay. So the events that led up to all of that, that led up to Naruto being married and all that. I just love the way 
that that Naruto series did everything that it did. Um, they gave you just everything, man. I, I, I have to say this. I have to say Naruto is just one of my favorites of all time. I just have to say that again. Like I said, Dragon Ball was 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 numero uno for a long time. OK, and it introduced me to all of this other anime. It was it was my my gateway into anime. I always love Toriyama and Dragon Ball for that. But at present day, like my favorite anime all time, and I don't think nobody's going to touch this. Now, they could be anime down the line. I've, I see, have yet to see that could compete with it. But as far as surpassing it, I don't think there's going to be another anime to do that. And I'm talking about Naruto. I mean, it's just and I'm not talking about Baruto, of course. I'm talking about the original Naruto and Shippuden. OK, that whole thing, that whole uh all of those episodes, okay, 720 beautiful episodes, 500 in Shippuden and 200 in Naruto, okay, love them all to death, but anyway, this movie, The Last, is definitely dope, it signifies uh, Naruto's love for Hinata, and it just, it just, it was delivered great, I love the way it was, it was written, all of that, <laughs> the timing, the pacing, all that stuff was pretty dope, man, I just, it was a beautiful movie. That's all I can tell you. Watch that. I'm also back on One Piece. Yes, I am back on One Piece. I mean, literally, I just only watched a couple episodes, but I'm back. I'm going <laughs> to segue back in there. And uh, next week, I should have a decent amount uh, watched. OK, we'll see where that goes, because I'm doing a lot of stuff now. I'm working on some new software uh, and for the business and stuff like that. So my time is definitely going to be going towards that a lot of the time. But I am going to get my anime in as I work. OK, and this is one I'm back on board with. So, yeah, one piece. We're here. Also, another oldie but goodie. Let's go with that. Inuyasha. OK, jump back on Inuyasha it was also one of my favorite anime. Matter of fact, Inuyasha was my second anime I think I've ever watched besides Dragon Ball. That was the one I really other one I got into and really fell in love with. OK, that one there. So, yeah, Inuyasha is definitely classic. Been watching that. And yeah, that's what I've been doing as far as the anime watch list is concerned. So a lot of different things, a lot of different flavors. And that's what I've been on, guys. So look forward to next week and uh, we'll see what happens next. Let's see what I stumble into. Um, and that's not even all. There's one more anime on this list that I can't believe I almost passed it up. But it goes by the name of the Master of Ragnarok and Blesser of I can't pronounce this last word. I'm going to butcher it in her jar. OK, I know I'm probably butchering that shit, man, but. That's what I saw. Finished it up. It was like a 13 episode uh, anime. I've been doing a lot of those this last past week. I think I watched three or four of them that, that, that were like single season anime. And they mostly all wrapped up beautifully. And this is another one of those. So watch that. Enjoy myself with that. And yeah, I've been watching a lot of different shit. So that's my anime watch list. Now let's get to the fucking news. Let's start with Saifu. Okay. Saifu was a game that I have and I was looking forward to and I definitely enjoyed my time with it. Still didn't get a chance to finish it all the way. Got towards the end and then got sidetracked with another game. I can't remember the game, but I, I can't remember. But anyway, I will get back on that. I hadn't even played it since the update that they had where they changed a lot of few. They changed a few things. They added some more modes in there. Uh, they made an easy mode, I think, something like that in there. So they put some new things in there. I have yet to even check that shit out, but I will do so whenever I get a chance to go back to it because I did enjoy myself with that game. That is definitely one of the best beat em ups there are out there. Uh, one beat em up in particular, though, it is not better than. There's one that still reigns supreme, and I don't think it'll ever be taken off of that list. And that game is the River City Girls franchise. Okay, River City Girls 1 is my favorite beat them up of all time and it'll probably be taken out by the only the one and only <laughs> river city girls 2 and that's probably the only game that will beat it because it's supposed to be bigger and better and better i ordered that found the game i think i mentioned it last week i can't remember but i did go to uh play asia and i got uh both games on one cartridge and it's like i said the states are going to get theirs later i don't know what's going on with them it released in Japan on the first. I don't know what's going on with the. I don't know if they're working on the uh, the dubs or maybe the online. People are saying the co-op. OK, they were saying like 
the one that I purchased, which is the from Play Asia, the Asian, the Japanese version, that one doesn't come with the four player co op. And there's something else uh, online. I think there's another one online co op or something. And supposedly, they're supposed to add that later in the patch, but those things are missing right now and it will be added later. And that's why those are able to be released now. But hey, as long as I can get two player co op, I don't care. Uh, me and my son, we played the shit out of the first one. Man, we we, I, we love that game. But I love River City Girls. So that should be here next week. Looking forward to that. Um, that'll be something to do on his Christmas vacation. And then we got some other things. And I'm going to get to another game, like I said before, that we have been enjoying. And I just recently just, you know, booted it back up, man. And I'm in fucking loving it. And there's, there's really a couple games. Uh, I'm going to get to that in Two Shakes of a Lamb's Tale. But let's go back. I got sidetracked. Let's hit this Saifu shit back. But Saifu uh, basically is going to be doing a live action movie. OK, that is in the works. This one, I think, can can do. I think this one will work. All right. Uh, I think this one could actually be something special. It has potential to do that. And the only reason why I'm saying that is because the director um, or, yeah, the director of this is supposedly be going to be the guy who did John Wick, the John Wick creator. So that's very interesting. OK, there's a very interesting drawback back backdrop. So we'll see where that goes. I definitely saw this and wanted to share it with you guys. Uh, look out for that or more information as time progresses. I'll definitely keep you guys in the loop on this one because I am a Saifu fan and uh, I am definitely a John Wick fan. So we'll get into that as we get more stuff, you know, later on down the line. Next thing I want to talk about is an indie game that goes by the name of Wave Tail. OK, this game is coming to PC and it's also coming to consoles I want to say in December. Yeah, it's coming soon. OK, maybe in the next week or so. But anyway, the reason why I bring this up is really only one reason. And that's because this game was actually this was actually a Google Stadia exclusive game. So this one actually made it out of the trenches, uh, escaped out of the dirty, uh, poisonous womb of <laughs> uh, the poisonous womb of this uh, Google Stadia debacle okay and got free and made its way to video game heaven i guess um without being butchered okay because all those other games man i just thinking about that i still get kind of sad not for google stadia but for the devs for the people who worked there who made games who had high hopes and dreams who were lied to about the company and how uh you know lied to about the longevity of the company and all of that. And, and it was just blatant disrespect, man. I mean, they told these people, yo, yeah, we're, we're, we're working on this. We got this in the works. Guys, rest easy. Don't worry. Everything's going to be okay. Never mind, you know, the no sales. Never mind, you know, our stock plummeting. Everything's going to be fine. And a lot of these guys found out on Twitter that they had no jobs. So I guess that's that's a reason to be upset. But that's also a reason to feel sorry for the people who were there. Hopefully they found other jobs and, and other gigs and things of that nature and made it out of the bullshit. But anyway, that uh, is definitely a game that I'm looking forward to. And the only reason I'm looking forward to it is because it's coming to Game Pass. It's definitely coming to Game Pass. And it's an indie game. They, I, I, I want to say Microsoft has a special they do every year. They've been doing it for a while. It's like some sort of small indie showcase. I forgot the name of it, but they feature, they're going to be featuring about 20 games where you can actually go and download the demos for about a week. You got about a week's time to do it and it should be coming up very soon. And you can check out these indie games. You have that week uh, to check them out and then uh, they will terminate the games from being able to be played there. Unless the developers and the company decides that they want to prolong that and put it in with the other demos that, you know, people are allowed to download and play. So some games may make it there. Some games probably won't, but uh, yeah, this is one of those games and the reason why it kind of caught my eye was, number one, it was a Google Stadia game. It was an exclusive. Number two, uh, the way that it plays, the the feeling, uh, the kind of style that the game is in. It's got kind of like a journey slash Breath of the Wild kind of feel to it. I know that's kind of crazy. It sounds kind of strange. But if you know about the game Journey and most of us know about at least know about Breath of the Wild, then you can kind of give yourself an idea of what this may look like. And that's what this game kind of does. If you're curious about it and you want to know more, just look up the game. Uh, the name of the game is, uh, what is the name of the game? Uh, Wavetail, W-A-V-E-T-A-L-E, Wavetail. So check that out. And it's going to be free on Game Pass. If you have it, cool. 
Uh, it'd be definitely something to check out. Most of these games I wouldn't even play if it wasn't for Game Pass, but thank God for Game Pass. That's why I have it. Moving on, let's talk about some <laughs> Monster Hunter Rise. Now, I was very excited to hear this, and I think I knew about this months back, but it, you know, so many things happen in the gaming world, and, and I cover a lot of stuff that after about a few weeks, I kind of my brain resets. And I just uh, forget about a lot of stuff, man, you know, and, and until it comes back around, circles back around. And one of those things is Monster Hunter Rise. Monster Hunter Rise is coming to pretty much all consoles in January. OK, January 20th, to be exact. So the day after my birthday, that's crazy. That's going to be a nice birthday present, man. It's coming out to PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Xbox Series S and X and all of that. OK, it's already out on PC. But I'm interested in this because I have. I have my starting rise on the switch and I love the game. I put in, I'd say I put in about 85, 90 hours, probably over a hundred hours. Now once that new DLC came out, I did, I did put in some work. So I, I probably have a good hundred hours in that game. Okay. Now I would definitely love to play it again uh, at 60 frames. I would definitely love to play it, you know, at, at its peak performance if I could. And it looks like it's going to be possible because this is also coming to game pass. OK, so I won't have to pay for that. And the DLC is also coming in spring is what they're talking about of 2023. So everything that everybody's enjoying on the switch, you know, you'll be able to enjoy on all of your consoles, any console you want. And I, I, I highly recommend anybody who is a Monster Hunter fan. If you liked Monster Hunter World, you're going to fucking love Monster Hunter Rise. OK, because it's it's basically. Oh, man, how can I put this? It's like Dragon watching Dragon Ball Z and then watching Dragon Ball, Dragon Ball Kai, Dragon Ball Z Kai. In a sense, it's like they take out they take the, all the best shit and they let go of all the other stuff. OK, if that makes any sense. So, yeah, as far as traversal, that was my main thing in the Monster Hunter games, man. You you, you literally have to run or, or, or jog, shall I, shall I say, uh, everywhere you fucking went. Um, now you don't have to worry about that. You can get around very fast off of your pets, off of your the things that you ride. It's just it's gonna it's great. You guys are gonna fucking love it. And now being able to experience this shit at sixty frames, oh yeah. Now the only thing that I <laughs> that I that I'm worried about when it comes to this game is something that goes by the name of cross saves. If you don't know what cross save support is, it's basically just a game playing a game on like a Nintendo Switch or another console. And then it comes out later for another one. And you're like, well, I would like to play it. It's a better version of that. But, you know, I have to start all over again. Is there a way I can fucking cross, you know, take my save here and, and take it there? So that's what that is. So hopefully we get that. But I don't know with Nintendo. I don't know how they're going to. I don't know if they're going to. If that's going to work, you know, taking your save from Nintendo and exporting it into the Xbox and using it there. That's going to be that may be an issue. Do I mind playing it again, starting over again? Technically, no. I think I could do that. But man, I mean, all, those, all that time, that is a lot of time devoted into a lot of things I tried to get, I had to get. And it would suck to have to do that all over again. So, you know, we'll see. We'll definitely, I'm definitely going to check this one out, though, on the Xbox Game Pass for sure. But yeah, thought I'd share that with you guys. Uh, if you are a Monster Hunter fan, you should be happy, uh, especially the ones who don't have a Nintendo Switch or, you know, we're waiting to play it on something else. So cool. There you have it. All right. Next thing I want to talk about is this drama, this fucking drama with Nintendo. OK, there's some drama that's happened. And if you're a Smash Brothers player, you may have heard about this stuff, guys. But Nintendo supposedly pulled the plug on this tournament uh, that, that's been going on and. It's supposed to be called the Smash World Tour, okay? And a lot of people who are into that Smash Brothers scene know about it, and they participated in all these other things. But anyway, apparently Nintendo has pulled the plug on that tournament. Uh, they pulled the plug November ninth, November twenty ninth, matter of fact, okay? So they, it just recently happened, and supposedly the people who are who are hosting it and are paying for all this shit, which they go by the name of Video Game Bootcamp, they basically said. Nintendo fucked us. OK, they pulled out on us on the last minute. They pulled out warm butter at the last second. I mean, literally November 29th, probably at eleven fifty nine. They heard a ding like a microwave uh, alarm go off and they heard that microwave door open. And lo and behold, there was Nintendo pulling out a tub of freshly melted warm butter. OK, and they were using it. 
they they fucking used it. OK, they hit him over their head with a foreign object. They passed out. OK, and Nintendo proceeded to remove their garments, pull out that warm butter, dip their tip in the warm butter and then get to fucking. OK, that's what happened. I'm just, I'm just keeping it real with you guys. Sometimes you have to get graphic to get the point across. And apparently that's what happened. And a lot of people are upset. They're angry. <laughs> They're mad. You know how passionate a lot of these players are, especially these smash players. And hey, rightfully so, if this all is true, okay? Now, this is what they're saying. Nintendo is trying to double back, saying that they care, quote unquote, they care about the fans. And, you know, that's not what happened. And I think Nintendo is probably lying here, okay? I think Nintendo's probably doing a little lying here. Nintendo does this shit. I think the only reason why they came out with it, with saying what they said, is because they started to be, get backlash. They started to get people complaining. Uh, actual tournament players, professional tournament players, were speaking out on this shit, and they were saying that they weren't not going to go to any more tournaments and all that until all this shit is fixed or figured out. And I think Nintendo finally got a little bit of pressure because usually Nintendo won't give a fuck. They'll just like, we're going to do what we're going to fucking do. OK. And technically, they're still not really doing anything. OK. And they probably won't do any more than what they've already done. You know, and it would probably take a mass, uh, a, a huge number of, of people to really, you know, make this uh, catch fire before Nintendo does anything. And if they do anything, it's probably going to be minimal at best. But I'm just saying that's Nintendo, man. You know, you love them some days and you fucking hate them some days. They just they're set in their ways and they just do shit their way. And sometimes it's not for the best. OK, they 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 have pulled out warm butter on lots of people and they are not afraid to use that warm butter. OK, and they have been doing it. Their sake glasses are filled to the brim on a lot of different occasions. They also have uh, their boardrooms, you know, closed, locked, shut tight with wet towels, you know, under the crack of the door. They're lighting in those sticks. They're smoking sherm sticks. They're, they're sniffing cocaine off, you know, off of fucking everything. OK. Uh, tables, all that shit. So they've been known to do these things. Okay. They've been known to make these decisions and be under the influence, or at least it seems that they are under the influence when they make a lot of their decisions. And that's just what they do. Okay. And most of us have grown to accept it. And I just take the good out of the bad because there's some good. I mean, yes, I wouldn't have a switch and I wouldn't be doing this. Trust me. If it, if it was all garbage, if it was all warm butter, I would definitely be out of the way. But with Nintendo, I'm just telling you guys, you all know this, especially um, all the Nintendo fans listening to this. You have to have a a titanium belt, a titanium pair of draws on uh, on certain times, certain occasions with Nintendo because they will pull that one butter out on you. OK, but anyway, that's what's going on with them. So there's a tug of war going on here. Nintendo saying this isn't true or that's not right. And the company saying bullshit. Nintendo did do this potato, potato. So. Just thought I'd give you that information. Hopefully they get this shit cleared up and they can get this back rolling, this tournament back rolling. But I don't know. Nintendo's claiming that, oh, we're, they're not uh, officially licensed by us. Therefore, in other rules, they, they, they're not practicing that, that we think we feel needs need to happen. And, and that's the reason. But the, the company is saying, well, we've been talking to them up to, for a whole year up to this point. They have not said a thing. And then at the very last minute, that's when they open that you know, microwave up and pull out that butter on us. So it just depends, man. I don't know who's telling the truth, but I'm I'm sure that Nintendo has something OK to do with this shit. That's just me. All right. Anyway, moving on, getting off that Nintendo shit. OK, let's get on to the Callisto protocol. Yes, this game is out. A lot of people have been talking about this game and the reviews are. <laughs> shall I say it again about another game? They're all over the place. OK, IGN gave it IGN gives it a 10. Out of, I mean, a seven out of 10. GameSpot gives it a five out of 10. Is it me or is GameSpot just they just give everything fucking fours and fives as from what I've been seeing? It's all they've been fucking doing lately. GameSpot are some I don't know. I'm not really feeling GameSpot. I'm just going to say that I'm going to have to go back and look at some of their games and look at their catalog games and kind of just study some of the games they reviewed, the, at least the ones that I've played. So I can kind of see where the fuck they're at, because right now I'm just keeping it real with you guys. It, it feels like there's somebody in, in there, whoever they have reviewing this shit that, that is truly, uh, you know, really drinking, really, really heavy on the sauce. OK, the sake is is in full effect. And they are just cutting corners and just doing shit. OK, that's what it seems like to me. 
Metacritic is giving these guys 76 percent. OK, uh, you have an audience summary, which is about 342 people as of this podcast right now. They're giving it a four out of five. OK, so I don't know what's wrong with GameSpot, but most people are giving it seven, eight, you know, score. Uh, I've watched a friend of mine played. He bought the game. We did some share playing. Uh, he shared a screen. I actually also watched some YouTubers play this because I wasn't going to buy it now. Now, for me personally, it's just I don't <laughs> I have too many games. I still have a lot of backlog to get to, guys. And I said, you know what? It's Christmas time and I'm not going to be spending all this bread, all this fucking bread. I'm just spending a lot of money. I'm weak. I'm weak, guys. Like I went to I went to fucking um, movie trading company the other day. If you guys don't know what that is, because they're not in every state, but they're kind of like a. They're like mixed, a mix of GameStop. They're like, a, man, they sell games. They sell retro games, which is why I love them a lot, too. I, I got I got my Xbox. Uh, no, I got my Sega Saturn from them. So so they have a lot of retro shit, too. They sell posters. They have a lot of anime shit there, too. OK, they have movies. They have manga. Uh, they have regular movies, DVDs, Blu-rays, like that type of stuff. This is what they carry. Kind of a lot of memorabilia, a lot of collectibles. They're just an awesome little store. I was in there. I go there often. Sometimes I go there maybe once a month or something like that. <laughs> anyway, I'm in there and I got weak. OK, if you check out my Instagram, you can see it. I, <laughs> I posted. I fucking saw a Zorro uh, statue and I also saw a fucking Kakashi. You guys, you know, if you don't know, if you're new, I am weak for Kakashi. OK, I love Kakashi is like probably one of besides Vegeta. He's probably my ultimate most favorite anime character in the whole fucking world okay like completely like nobody's fucking with him except for Vegeta. that's the only other dude that can fuck with him and uh i saw this ambu black op statue that he fucking had on and his pose and i said oh shit okay and he was way up at the ceiling so to get him down you'd have to get a store clerk to get him down and the store was going to close in like five minutes and i said you know what uh, no, nah, fuck that. He's he's getting that shit, sir. Please, I I need your assistance. And he got it. And uh, I love Zoro too. Zoro, uh, in One Piece is just really clicked with me uh, as a character. So I saw this piece. This pose he was in was pretty dope. And it's his. I know I don't recognize this outfit he has on. I know this is like further down in the series from where I'm at. And uh, but he just was an awesome pick. So I can't wait to get to the to that to that time uh in in one piece to to where you know he's actually wearing this stuff he's, he looks darker he's he's definitely on um, on some darker shit he's got new scars and all this so i'm like yo yeah this this one looks crazy but anyway you can check it out on my instagram at studio macgyver if you're curious but yeah they they are i mean killing it with these statues man <laughs> like so detailed i mean fuck i just yeah and i'm not i don't even have anywhere to put this shit like i'm like i'll get it's like i'm getting all this stuff when we get our house so that I can have some, <laughs> I'll, I'll have this stuff ready. Like I have a lot of shit that's just not even here yet, but it'll, you know, I'm keeping it in the box and it'll, it'll come. I mean, I picked up a black Panther figure. I picked up my Spider-Man from Japan. I think I told you guys about that. That's been here for a minute. Uh, that, that, that symbiote Spider-Man is sick. Okay. Uh, Mayfex is the company that, it, that Spider-Man is sick. I'm going to be posting that on my Instagram too in the next couple of days or so, but I was surprised they haven't done it sooner. But yeah, that, that fucking Spider-Man is sick. I love Symbiote Spider-Man. I love that version of him, the amazing Spider-Man. Yeah, I used to read those books too back in, when I was a kid. And I remember when he had cosmic powers, all that shit. He was just doing a lot of shit back then. But yeah, that Spider-Man is amazing. But anyway, uh, yeah, I just got weak. I got weak over there at that, that store, guys, and I went and bought something. I don't even know how I got on this subject. I'm just, I fucking just went off the reservation. I think I was talking about uh, the Callisto Protocol, and then I ended up somewhere else. Okay, somewhere else. But anyway, let's let's, let's reel back, let's reel this shit back in. Those reviews uh, on this game are all over the place, but for the most part, they're pretty solid. And I enjoyed watching what I saw of the game. And uh, I think I'll I'll be getting it when it gets cheaper, when the price goes down, uh, because, like I said, I, it's Christmas time and I have to make sure everybody's Christmas is taken care of. And like I said, I've been getting weak and, and buying shit I shouldn't be buying. So, yeah, uh, going to take care of all that stuff first and then uh, my, handle my backlog, get some of that down because I still have games to play and I haven't got to them yet. I ordered uh, 
like I said, River City Girls 1 and 2, I ordered that. That's coming from Play Asia. That's coming. That'll be here next week. So I got stuff coming in still to play. So, yeah, I need to slow my roll on that. So eventually when, when I'm ready to buy that, it, it'll be 25, 30 bucks. And, and that's perfect for me. But I don't have any problems with the game, yo. I like personally me. Everything I've seen is beautiful. Graphics are excellent. Uh, those animations, those kill animations, stuff like that are so realistic. All that shit is dope. OK, um, I don't know how long the game is, but people are claiming like 15 hours, maybe 10 hours, 12, 15 hours, something like that. And I'm like, uh, uh, I don't know. I, I think it may be a little longer, but we'll see. Like I said, my friend is playing it now, so we'll, we'll get to the end eventually and see it. I don't mind watching somebody play it now and then buying it later and playing it for myself, you know, with certain games, especially if I know I'm not getting it anytime soon, which is cool because the real one. Uh, is the remake, which is coming out in January, uh, the Dead Space remake. So looking forward to that one. I am a old school Dead Space guy, played all the Dead Space games, love them. And this is what this game came from. So it stems from that. So definitely look forward to that. And yeah, that, that's what's up with the Callisto protocol reviews, man. Pretty solid reviews. And like I said, from what I saw personally, it's a pretty dope game. All right. And if you have the money, I mean, shit, you know, you feel like you want to do it and you got nothing to play. Hey, and you love horror, your horror buff. Shit. Hey, it's, this is for you. This is definitely going to be up your alley. OK. Now, one thing I did notice about this game, if you don't like being all in somebody's face, you may not. <laughs> you may become very uncomfortable with this game because you're definitely going to be in the monster's faces. And that's going to be kind of new for me because I'm always that guy trying to hang back if I can. And, uh, you know, all of that. So we'll see because you're using that fucking baton, whatever that thing is you got. You're using it a lot. OK, a lot of melee in this fucking game. All right. And a lot of ammo <laughs> conservation is definitely going to be about this game right here. So just be looking forward to that. Let's move on uh, to the end. This is the end. Uh, yeah. The end of the show. The last thing I wanted to talk about was, man, the game that I've been playing games i should say plural because i recently like i said i told you guys i was splurging i actually also picked up <laughs> Kimitsu no yaiba aka demon slayer the game i picked that up on the playstation 5 and i beat that this past week as well i played this play through the story uh got to you know the mugen train arc and man it still touches me to this day even in the game maybe telling the story okay when 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 rengoku died you know, I and I low key shed a tear, man. I Almo almost shed a tear. My eyes got they did get they did get a little blurry. OK, and I love Rengoku. Uh, he's my second favorite character in Kimitsu no Yaiba besides Tanjiro. Uh, Tanjiro is just that's he's just the shit. OK, but right next to him is Rengoku. I just love Rengoku, what he stands for. Everything about him is his, his uh, aesthetics, all that shit. OK. His skill, he's just hes just that guy. His attitude, everything about him. So, yeah, I've been playing that. But the one me and my son has been playing, I was like, you know, I'm in an anime playing mood because I always I collect anime games. Now, I don't I don't always get them when they first come out. Um, there is a Seven Deadly Sins game coming out that I am getting day one. It looks fucking awesome. OK, it looks great. It's coming out for mobile as well. That's when I first saw it. I mentioned it on the show before. You guys may not remember all my old school listeners, people who've been with me for a while. They may they probably remember that shit. They may. But that shit is dope. If you haven't seen Seven Deadly Sins, the anime, definitely check that one out, too. That one was a sleeper. I remember starting that one and not really feeling it when I first saw it. And I went back around and that was one of the ones where I went back to. And that shit picked it. It picked up and it just caught me. Uh, dope characters in there as well. A lot of dope characters. And uh, the game looks fucking breathtaking. I don't know. I can't remember who's making it, but yo, it's a fucking awesome looking game. And I am definitely going to be playing this. But anyway, um, I'm, I collect anime games. I usually don't buy them up front. I usually wait for them to come out and then I get them on the sales. And that's what I kind of did with this. If I would have waited a little longer, I could probably could have got that game for eventually like 20 bucks. But I said, fuck it. I've been wanting to play it. And uh, 60 frames is play is fucking breathtaking, uh, that game. But anyway, the game, me and my, I had to pull back out. I had to pull out of the, the archives. Uh, well, he didn't even want to, was so crazy. He didn't even want to play this shit at first. Okay. He's playing Dragon Ball because I have, I played Dragon Ball Universe 2. I've been playing that too, off and on. So he was playing that for a while. And, and then, um, 
I said, you know what? I'm gonna. I need you to download this for me. Put this in. He was like, what's this? I said, huh, Ninja Storm. Okay, the Ninja Storm series. So he put it in. We downloaded it, and he said he wanted to play. When I say we got on this game and we played this shit all night long, like Lionel Richie, oh, we did that shit. We played this shit, man. And I have to say this: <laughs> out of all the games that connect, the Connect Company, I forgot the the actual fucking name let me see i got the game in my kind of in my hand because i bought this i remember buying this after i finished naruto shippuden i remember it was like 2017 okay 2017 man and i had just finished shippuden okay and um i i was just i felt i was just so in, engulfed in naruto like i was so in love with naruto and the series and, and everything and i wanted you know, I wanted the games. I wanted to know more about it. And that's when I started discovering that, man, they've been making Naruto shit for years. OK, all the way back on fucking Nintendo DS and stuff like that. I just never I never watched the series up until that point. OK, and Naruto has been around for years. So, you know, I I bought this. I bought the. Uh, I guess what do you call this, the ultimate the storm collection. So it comes with a steel case and, and all that shit. So I, I absolutely love this game. But anyway, I'm looking at it now. It's just beautiful. We played that. We we played it nonstop. When he wakes up, he's probably going to come in here and say, Dad, can we <laughs> play Ninja Storm? And, you know, he my son got salty. I ain't going to lie. He got a little salty because, man, I think we played like 50 matches easily. And then I probably won maybe like 47 of them. No, no, wait. 43 of them. He won about seven matches. Okay. I let, I let him win a couple, but he's decent though. He's definitely decent getting gathering his stuff up and uh, he'll be back. He's going to get some revenge. Um, we played for some Pokemon cards the other night. You know, he didn't win his Pokemon cards, but maybe he can redeem himself um, tonight and he can win a pack of Pokemon cards if he beats me because the last bet we had was, yo, if you, uh, if you beat me, you know, in this match right here, uh, you, I'll get you some Pokemon cards. But if I win, you have to kiss my big toe. And I won and he was, I, I took off my sock and everything. I was going to make him do it. But then he was like, he was ready to do it. He was, he wasn't a, he was a sore loser, but he wasn't sore on that. And I said, nah, nah, man, I'm not going to I'm, I'm make you do that. But hopefully he can redeem himself and he can get his Pokemon cards and he can put a squad together. Cause at one point he was just throwing together people and I was doing it too, like discovering new players. Cause I didn't play with half that roster. Okay. So now I, I gave me a chance to, you know, kind of, you know, mess around. And I found a couple gems uh, off up in there. Like Roshi, Roshi is definitely a gem, a hidden gem in there. Um, I forgot that Naruto robot. Like he's, he's like a synthetic Naruto. Like he's fucking crazy. He, he's like a, he, he reminds me of like a, I'm like an Iron Man version of, of Naruto, but definitely a fun character to play with. But you know, Kakashi, that's my guy. He, he pretty much stays on the team. I don't think I've ever had a match uh, without him um, when I played my son, like ever. You know what I mean? I, he always a version of him is always on my squad. OK, I usually swap out another two characters, but Rock Lee is definitely another character I like to keep in my team on my squad. But he fell in love with Rock Lee because I was I was dusting him off hard with 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 uh with him. And I usually keep I don't even fight with him like in my team. Like I usually keep. Um, I usually keep a uh, Rock Lee on my squad for when the awakening starts. So when I get an awaken, I, I pull him in and I let him open up those gates and uh, I fucking love it. OK, definitely one of my favorite characters in Naruto. He's definitely my top five for sure. He's probably my I, I probably have to say Rock Lee is, you know, Kakashi number one. I'd probably have to say he would be number two or number three. OK, because Obito is definitely in there, too. But I probably have to say, yeah, number two. I have to give Rock Lee my number two. Yeah, straight up. He, he's that he's that bad, man. He is. But anyway, we're playing. We're doing our thing. And I just have to say this game is still amazing to this day. Like so many characters, um, the maps, like all of that shit. I just I love this game. They did an excellent job on this game. The the especially the. The jitsus, oh my god! I mean, I'm, uh, 
yo, I am so for real with this. Uh, <laughs> this shit makes me want to do like a whole bunch of shorts on, you know, these fights. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I think I'm going to try to do something to chop them up and and do some shorts because this shit is was ridiculous because you have the option to kind of save your matches after it's over. And I think I'm going to start doing that and editing some stuff up. <laughs> but yeah, I fucking love this game. OK, and I could play this game by myself. You could play two on two, three on three, one on one. You can do handicap matches, all these things, man, you know, you could do. So all I have to say is I just it's a, if you haven't played this and if you're a fan of Naruto, you owe it to yourself to play this. You put you need this in your collection. You definitely need it in your fucking collection for sure. And in like I said, Ninja Storm 4, I haven't really played the other three. I have them. I played a little bit of three and I enjoyed myself with that. And there are also like story elements too in these games. So you, you have a lot of different things you can do with this game. So it's it's just you have lots of things, lots of replay value uh, with this stuff. So, yeah, man, it's one of those easy to play, hard to master, you know. Once you get the fundamentals down and start mixing and matching and know how you what you're doing and how teams work and stuff, you can really do some cool shit in here, man. And I'm still trying to learn that with uh, with the Demon Slayer game as well, because it's easy to play, but it's also hard to master. You can definitely pull some stuff together. I've been watching some videos on that stuff. So, yeah, both games graphically beautiful uh, and Naruto holds up to any game of these type of style of game. In, in anywhere it will hold up in it i don't see it going anywhere at all okay but anyway that's what we've been doing man that, that's that been my week and uh i'm looking forward to next week and christmas around the corner and you know all that stuff watch to see the kids faces man happy on christmas day i might even barbecue on christmas like that's some different shit but it'll be cool i can barbecue uh we always watch you know uncle buck and home alone those are like our two movies that we always watch around the holiday season. It's kind of like a ritual for us. Two classic movies, in my opinion. And then we get on with the with the other stuff, man. So thank everybody for coming. Next week, please be looking out because it's going to be a, a doozy of a podcast, I think. I think we're going to get some good, solid news at this uh, Game Awards event. And I cannot wait to dive into that. Uh, everybody who's listened to this podcast from day one, I thank you. I love you. All the newcomers. I hope to see you guys again. We do this every Monday, same bat time, same bat channel. Uh, with that being said, though, I'm going to bow gracefully. But before I do, I want to also say check out DragonBallDrip.com and you guys can uh, check out the merch there. Anything purchased there will go out, go towards helping out the show. Also, you can check out StudioMacGyver.com. You can check me out there as well. Anything purchased there will also help out the show. OK, I'm going to be. Uh, revamping that stuff going to be adding new products maybe even sooner than later especially on the dragon ball drip uh, website so definitely be looking out for that stuff guys yeah about to go in okay uh, with that being said now i'm going to get my ass out of here i love you guys this is studio macgyver and you have been listening to random gameplay pimping see you next time mm-hmm.